So if you want to be successful in mathematics, it's an absolute must that you know how to work with square roots, cube roots, powers, and exponents because these are everywhere in math. And if you really understand all the rules with uh, roots and powers and exponents, then this should be a pretty easy problem to do without the aid of a calculator. But a lot of people are not going to be able to figure this out because they don't understand these concepts well enough. But uh, let's see how you do with this problem. Again, the only rule here is no calculator. The problem is we want to take the cube root of the square root of 1 over 64. And if you know how to solve this problem, well, put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. And then I'm going to review the real critical uh, principles that you need to know in mathematics to solve this problem. And I'm actually going to solve this problem in two ways. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button as that definitely helps me out. Let's go ahead and get started right now. And what I want to do first is uh, take a look at this problem and just review what we're dealing with here, right? So we have a cube root, which is different than a square root. So most of you, if I say, well, find the square root of four, you would say, well, that is going to be two, right? This is technically what we call the principal square root. And what we're saying here is, um, when we um, ask ourselves or we look at a question like what's the square root of a number like the square root of four well the answer is two because two times two is of course four okay let's go ahead and just do another problem here but we're going to use the cube root uh, right now so we'll use the cube root because um, obviously we're going to be dealing with the cube root here but let's do something easy the cube root of eight so if the question here the square root of four was, hey, find a number such that you multiply it by itself, you get back to this number, well, that number is two. So what does a cube root uh, mean? Well, it means find a number such that when you multiply it by itself three times, we get back to eight. Now, of course, that would also be two. Two times two times two is eight, so the cube root of eight is uh, two. Now, most people, uh, I think, understand that. But what we need uh, to do to solve this particular problem, to make our life a lot easier, is to understand something called rational exponents. And we're going to need a few other things as well. But let's uh, start off first by reviewing what a rational exponent is. Okay, so in mathematics, in algebra, what we can do is write a cube root, for example, in a different way. So we can write it this way, for to the one-third power, okay? Now this little exponent here, now let's just recall like two to the fifth power, this little number here is called an exponent, and this big number down here is called the base, the entire thing is a power. So what we're talking about here is something called rational exponents, rational exponents. So our exponents are what we call rational numbers, which effectively are fractions in mathematics okay fractions that can make up of integers so uh, this is the topic so if some of you are actually taking an algebra course or a math course and you're like well where do i go in this course to review what i'm talking about here again you're talking about roots powers and rational exponents but again what we can do here is write a, a cube root for example using a rational exponent. So let's just see what the pattern in, uh, here is. So this little number, 3, becomes the denominator, and it's 1 over this. Okay, let's go ahead and see another example. So what's the fifth root of 4? Well, if you're saying to yourself, was it 4 to the one uh, fifth power? Yes, indeed. You get the idea that is how uh, you write rational exponents. So here's a square root of 4. Okay, so you might be saying, well, where's the number? I don't see the number here. Well, the square root is actually a 2 right here, okay? We don't say, or we don't write a 2, but there is a 2 there, so this is going to be 4 to the 1 half power. So if you have your calculator, just want to kind of, you know, verify what I'm saying, 
go ahead and put into your calculator four parentheses and you'll have to find uh, the, uh, your power button but it's typically something like this to the one divided by two and use parentheses when you are always taking the powers uh, you uh, power something with uh, rational exponents so four to the one half power you'll see indeed is a two right because we're talking about the square root of four okay so this is the first thing that we want to know and that it, of course is that we can write roots uh, square roots cube roots whatever fifth roots doesn't make a difference as rational exponents so this is going to come in very handy all right let's go ahead and take a look at some other things that we need to understand about uh, powers and exponents because now we're going from uh, things like the fifth root and we're writing this in terms of an exponent right so let's say this is x so x to the one uh, fifth power so it's probably a good idea to know a few principles uh, and these are not uh, all the things that you need to know about uh, properties of powers and exponents but these are the ones that we're going to need for this particular uh, problem and the first one is a to the m to the n so what does this mean well if we have a power uh, so we have a power with some exponent here and we take that to another power we raise that to another power which would be an outside exponent well this is going to be simply equal to a to the m times n now algebraically you might not uh, understand what's going on here so let's take a look at a few examples okay so 2 uh, cubed squared is going to be equal to 2 this is our outside exponent or n we're just going to simply multiply by the inside exponent 3 so that would be 2 to the 6. now let's just think about this why would this make sense well 2 cubed is what 2 times 2 times 2 this is 2 cubed right here and we want to square this right so in other words we're going to multiply this thing by itself so that's another 2 times 2 times 2 and we see how many twos do we have here well indeed we have six so you know oftentimes uh, when you look at a property or a law in algebra or mathematics you know if you just understand simple examples you'll see oh you know these laws you know totally make sense and if you forget them oftentimes you can kind of re-engineer uh, what the law is just in case if you forget the formal uh, pro um, properties or you know the formulas per se you could just kind of you know think about oh yeah this makes sense uh, let's go ahead and see another example here using a rational exponent so two to the one third uh, power two to the one third power to the sixth power so we're just going to multiply that six times one third so this would be equal to two squared all right so this is another thing that we want to use for this particular problem and there's one other property and this one uh, gives a lot of students uh, uh, some confusion and that is uh, powers to a negative exponent so the rule a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n what does that mean well let's take a look at some examples so 2 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over 2 to the third power so notice here anything with a negative exponent you can get rid of the negative exponent by basically putting it on the opposite side of the fraction bar okay now let me just show you with this property right here and we'll take a look at these other uh, examples uh, more closely but if I have a to the negative n and I want to think of this as a fraction I could just put it over one so if I want to get rid of a power uh, if I want to get or change a power with a negative exponent I could just put that same uh, that entire power right here put it put it to the opposite side of the fraction bar and the sign of the exponent changes so this becomes a to the positive n okay so here two to the negative uh, third power I'm like well I don't like negative exponents well just write this on the opposite side so that one over two to the positive third power now what if I had one over two to the negative uh, three power just like I have in this case well to make this positive just put this up into the numerator so I would have two to the positive third power okay now if you are a bit confused and this can be confusing certainly what I'm doing here is just doing some quick review about these properties and exponents are you struggling in math because of confusing lessons maybe the teachers not showing you all the steps you need or things are happening too fast well there is a better way so come on over to my math help program at tcmathacademy.com there you'll find clear step-by-step -step instruction by me that will definitely make a huge difference in your math success so make sure to check out all my courses by following the links in the description 
Okay, so let's get back to this problem and put everything uh, kind of uh, together, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this cube root of a square root, and i got a fraction here. I'm going to write this using rational exponents, rational exponents. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the inside. This is the square root of 1 over 64. So I can write this as 1 over 64 parentheses. Okay, you want to put this in parentheses to the 1 half power. Okay, so again, this right here, of course, is the square root of 1 over 64. Now, all of this is going to be taken to the 1 third power because we're trying to find the cube root of this uh, answer. Okay, so uh, to do this problem, without uh, using rational exponents, we would try to figure this answer out and then we would take the cube root of that. Okay, so uh, let me just go and erase this here so you can kind of see that this is what we want to do. We want to take this uh, expression with these roots here and write it this way. Okay, it's going to make this problem much, much easier. All right, now at this point, there are a few different options that we can take. I'm going to show you two good options. So the first thing is... Um, Let's take a look at 1 over 64. Now, um, I didn't mention this initially in terms of things that you need to know about square roots, but let me go ahead and show you what we could do here. So let's take a look at 1 over 64, and we're, this is to the 1 half power. So we can, we know, if even if I write it this way, we know that we're trying to find the square root of 1 over 64. Now, even though I um, have uh, written the problem using rational exponents, I could still say to myself, okay, what is the square root of 1 over 64? So if I write the square root of 1 over 64, I can break up this one big square root into two separate square roots. This is a property. It's another property. I can just write it, and let me just write it over here. Another property is a power, another property, excuse me, of powers and exponents. So it would be something like this. The square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. All right, so when I do this, though, I can um, um, uh, basically evaluate this pretty easily because now instead of the square root of 1 over 64, I have the square root of 1 over the square root of 64, which, of course, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 64 is 8. Okay, so uh, 1 over 64 to the 1 half power is equal to 1 eighth. All right, so now we can go ahead and rewrite this problem this way. So I have um, this, this 1 over 64 to the 1 half power. Well, all this now is equal to 1 eighth. So all I have to do is figure out well, what is 1 eighth to the 1 third power, which, of course, if I want to um, write this back uh, into uh, forms using radicals, this would be what? Well, this is the cube root of 1 over 8. And we do kind of, even though we may not uh, go back into this notation, you still always want to think about uh, these rational exponents as roots as well. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So what is the cube root of 1 over 8? Well, we can use the same property. Okay. This thing here I just showed you, the square root of a over b is equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. Same thing applies with uh, any root. Okay. Cube root, fifth root, doesn't make a difference. So I could break up this one big root into two smaller roots, okay, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So the cube root of 1 over 8 is equal to the cube root of 1 over the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 1 is 1, right? 1 times 1 times 1, uh, of course, is going to be 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2, and we uh, did that problem earlier in the video. So our final answer is 1 half. Okay, so that is one approach you could take, but there is another approach and um, really, this is the approach that I'm going to hope many of you can remember. Okay, now what I just covered is, you know, still valid and good, but here is kind of a better way to do this problem. So anytime you see something and you're working with rational exponents, uh, you always want to try to express numbers, if possible, okay, as powers. Okay, so for example, if I have 64, actually, let's use something simpler here. Uh, let's take 8, okay? So I have the number 8. Well, like, well, all right, how can I express this as a power? Easy, just write that as 2 to the third power. If I see 4, I would want to think of this as 2 squared. If I see 16, uh, you get the idea. This would be 2 to the fourth. If I see 25, you want to think of this as 5 squared. 
etc., etc., etc. So when you see things like 64, okay, you just don't want to write 64 as, uh, you might say, well, that's 8 squared. Well, that's good, but remember, 8 is also 2 cubed, okay? 2 cubed squared is 2 to the 6. So when you think of um, numbers as powers, you want to use the smallest base possible. Okay, so uh, again, a lot of these numbers are pretty common. You know, if you encounter a problem like this on a math test or quiz and there's no calculator allowed, the numbers are going to be pretty, uh, you know, easy to work with. Okay, so 1 over 64 is equal to 1 over 2 to the 6th power. Now, I want you to do another thing here is don't leave your answer as a uh, fraction. Okay, let's use this property a to the negative n to kind of consolidate this a to the negative n over 1 over a to the n, excuse me. So let's consolidate this, uh, let's get rid of a fraction and just consolidate this, consolidate this as a uh, simple power in exponents. So this, uh, this is going to be equal to 2 to the negative 6. Okay, so 1 over 2 to the 6 is the same thing as 2 to the negative 6. So hopefully you're with me. Okay, so now we're going to use this 2 to the negative 6 to make our life a lot easier. Okay, so right here we figured out that we have 1 over 64 and we wrote this whole thing as 2 to the negative 6. So this is all right here, 2 to the negative 6, and we're going to take this to the 1 half to the 1 third. All right, so here we go. We have 2 to the negative 6. All this is going to be taken to the 1 half to the 1 third. And now this is just one big multiplication problem because we just have all these exponents we have to basically clean up, right? So let's go ahead and deal with this right now. So we'll handle these exponents, these outside exponents. So 1 half times 1 third is going to be 1 6. So 2 to the negative 6, 2 to the 1 6 is what? Well, 2 to the negative 6, 2 to 1 6 is going to be 2 to the negative 1. And of course, we can write this as 1 over 2 to the first. Okay, And uh, in mathematics, it's uh, pretty much, um, well, it, we call this kind of a convention, uh, but it's kind of accepted that you don't want to leave your answers, uh, your final answers with negative exponents. So if you gave this to your teacher, they you know, possibly are going to be upset and take some points off. You don't want that to happen. So always express your final answers with powers and exponents with positive exponents. Okay, so take this 2 to the negative 1 and write it as 2 over 2 to, well, I'm sorry, 1 over 2 to the first positive 1, which of course is 2 or 1 over 2 or the fraction 1 half. Okay, so hopefully, you know, this wasn't too confusing for uh, those of you out there that, you know, maybe you know, forgot all this stuff. You know, I kind of threw a lot at, uh, at you in one video, but, you know, I think most of you will understand this. And here's the thing. Don't expect to understand math, you know, for the most part, when you go through one lesson or you do one problem, it takes multiple times. So, you know, over and over again, that's very normal. So if you're like, oh, wow, I, you know, I watched a full lesson on something or, a, you know, I, or even this video, for example, you watch it and you're like, well, I don't really get it. Well, you know, it, it again, you know, give yourself a couple of times to absorb the information. Okay, this is a lot of information. And, but once you understand one problem and you really understand what's going on, then you can apply all that knowledge and, you know, skills and comprehension to do other problems. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.